Welcome everyone. I hope you had an enjoyable lunch and you were able to get up and stretch a little bit. And now it's time for start, us to start stretching our brains again. So it is my pleasure to introduce our lunch keynote speaker, Nick Honeyset, and his presentation, Digital Strategy for a Generation. Nick Honeyset recently joined the Balboa Park Online Collaborative as Director and CEO. Previously, he was the head of the administration at the J. Paul Getty Museum, where he oversaw and liaised the museum's 200-plus personnel, budget, administrative, and operational needs across two sites, the Getty Center and the Getty, Getty Villa. He was responsible for all hiring, compensation, performance, budget, operation, policy, standard, standards adherence, short and long-range strategic planning, assessment management, and technology development initiatives. Additionally, Honeyset serves on the board of directors at the American Alliance of Museums, or AAM. One quick note before I turn it over to Nick is if you're seeing any videos that you're interested in today, just like the one we saw with Scott Sayer on iPads and museums, you can check these out in our NMC YouTube channel. All of these are archived there for you in your viewing pleasure. Without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Nick Honeyset. Hey, Holly. So this is me. Um, contact details if, you are, um, if you'd like to get hold of me, if you'd like to disagree with what I'm about to tell you over the next 30 minutes. So I've been having these thoughts recently about digital strategy. And uh, the, these thoughts are based on the fact that really it, it doesn't seem that anyone is wholesale adopting digital strategies. Um, and I particularly want to take issue with the three to five year digital strategy and, and really think more in depth and uh, more long term about what a digital strategy uh, should be. What I'm going to talk about is really, I'm seeing it at the, at the Getty Museum when I worked at, large museum, didn't have a comprehensive digital strategy and now I'm in Balboa Park and lots of museums, big and small, again, don't have a digital strategy. And this is really troubling to me, just uh, in, in simple terms, because if you've read the Horizon Report, you'll know that a comprehensive digital strategy has become a critically important part of planning for long-term institutional sustainability. There seems to be this um, pervasive belief, particularly in uh, the museum world, that technology is somehow only temporary. And I use this fantastic quote, slightly amended from The Terminator, in which I used to scare uh, executives, museum executives and, and boards and trustees with whom I had the great honor to talk to them about digital strategy. I use this quote that I'm going to share with you, changing one word. Listen and understand that technology is out there. It can't be bargained with. It can't be reasoned with. It doesn't feel pity or remorse or fear. And it absolutely will not stop ever until you are dead. And I like to use this to get the attention of executives about really focusing on uh, digital strategy and, and thinking about what that um, should mean to them. So part of my issue, if you look at technology, technology seems to be in this three-year cycle. So if you look at 2007, we had the iPhone. 2010, we had the iPad. 2013, last year, we're getting Google Glass. So you might expect that in 2016, we're going to get something else coming out. Uh, down the pike, and it kind of makes you wonder, you know, which came first, the, the three-year technical site technology cycle or the three-year strategy? And my one answer to that is MySpace. If you're planning around technology and you're you're focusing your efforts on something like MySpace, then um, I think that's a problem. So that's really where a lot of my uh, thoughts about this come from. And why is this a problem? Well, the challenge is if you come up with a strategy where you've got a set time period, it makes you think of technology and digital stuff as a project and not a process. And a project has a beginning, middle, and end, and then you're done, as opposed to really ingraining it within your organization. I use this great quote that I'll share with you. There's a link here, uh, which is this pastebin uh, link, which is uh, from Piotr Sertsky. Um, and it's kind of a manifesto on what young people think about uh, technology and digital stuff and the web, and I highly recommend you read it. It's a couple of thousand words. The web to us is not a technology. The web is a process happening continuously and continuously transforming before our eyes, with us, and through us. So they think of the tech. They think of the. They actually describe themselves as living along the web, which I think is fascinating. So again, technology isn't a project. Um, it's a process. Again, my, one of my other. Um, 
bugbears is the kind of what I call the parked digital strategy. You go through this process, you create this document, it lives for three or five years, and then you never look at it again until the time's up. Other times that you might look at it, I've highlighted here, and apologies to any stereotype that actually uh, matches. A trustee asks to see your digital strategy. You get a new CIO who wants to see it. You get a new director who wants to see it. Or someone queries a listserv, and this is the most uh, interesting one for me. And this is, this is what really tells me that digital strategy is a real problem in museums. Because when someone says, um, we're thinking about writing a digital strategy, can I see somebody else's? Everybody on the listserv puts up their hand and says, yeah, I want to see that too. So to me, that tells me that there is uh, a problem here with how we're regarding digital strategy right now. I'll uh, share this image with you gratuitously. Uh, this is affectionately known as the Bob Marley matrix, but really this is 10 years of Horizon reports, including the Museum um, Horizon uh, report. And here I've mapped out all the technologies over the last 10 years. And so this shows you exactly what this kind of roller coaster and kind of rinse and repeat of technologies going on that you really do have to keep a um, keep an eye on. Um, in terms of the color code, the color code represents the past, uh, the future, and the uh, the past, the present, and the future. Green is the past, orange is the present, red is the future. And there's a link um, that I'll leave you with. Uh, to this full presentation and you can look at this uh, matrix uh, to your heart's content. Basically the challenge is these are all these technologies going on and I like to look at what the kind of underlying thread or trend is underneath that. The other fantastically interesting thing for me on uh, the Horizon Report are the trends and the challenges. And here's a, there's a lot of detail in this, um, uh, in this slide and I'm not going to go into it and basically I just want to share with you the uh, if you look at the trends on the left hand side, this is the Museum Horizon Report. So first Museum Horizon Report was 2010. Uh, the colored uh, itemized trends are new trends and the white ones are ones that are carried over from previous years. And as you might expect, as we get to 2013, there's only one new trend that is emerging. That tells me that what, if you really want to focus on a digital strategy, you've got to forget about all those technologies that are going on disconnect yourself from those technologies and think about the broader trends um, that are happening and align your institution uh, with that. Also the challenges, um, I'm going to pick the three last challenges to kind of categorize um, uh, kind of broad trends about um, digital strategy. So the last four significant challenges, these are from the, the latest Horizon report, are uh, museums of all sizes are struggling to adapt to how technology is redefining staff roles and organization has become a critically important part of planning for long-term institutional sustainability. We saw that one. And museums are not doing a sufficient job of creating a sustainable environment to manage and deploy collection information and digital assets. And if you really look at what those three things mean, they mean people, process, and content. So I'm going to uh, kind of iterate around those uh, three things uh, for the rest of my uh, presentation. We live in the content economy. A um, couple of examples. Look at what um, Dallas Museum of Art have done for their DMA friends. The crucial thing about this is they're swapping a financial tra transaction for an information or a data transaction. That's um, hugely impactful and a huge uh, bellwether, I think, for uh, digital strategy. If you look at the big um, kind of business transactions that are going on, these big business buyouts that are happening right now, Dr. Beats, for example, that's not really about some you know, marginally useful uh, headphones, it's really about content. If you look at um, the fascinating picture of Sergey Brin here with Google Glass and, and what might be an iWatch, again, uh, appliances to deliver content. And the challenge with all this is that the museum world, in terms of managing content for the content economy, is really just focused on managing it for the web. And if you look at emerging technologies, for example, the iPhone, uh, the iPhone, sorry, the iWatch and Google Glass, how are we going to do that with our content management systems? And I think that's part of a um, that's a real problem and something that we really do need to uh, look at. So this issue got me thinking about content that museums are producing and what has the greater value. 
So these are all types of kind of categories of content. We've got social media, we've got video, audio stocks, you've got images, wall labels, object info, we've even got blog, blog posts. So it got me thinking about what, what is the value? We kind of know what the value of image assets are. Some institutions are uh, generating some revenue through rights and reproduction, but all this other stuff, we don't really think about that as, um, as assets that might have a lot more value. And thinking about the value of assets, I came up with a couple of I, uh, a couple of thoughts about that. But the value of an asset is proportional to its resonance. You know, we've talked about it. Um, stickiness might be another way to describe it that uh, other folks have used. And also, and, and and in fact, more importantly, value of an asset is proportional to the number of uses. And I think as we enter this content economy, resonance and number of uses are fantastically uh, important. Uh, things uh, to regard with regard to assets and not just Im image assets but content um, assets. And when we think about the three kind of major applications that museums are using collections information, digital asset management, content management, really what we need is a content as asset management system to think about content much differently because we're in a different world now whether it, when it comes to content. If you think of content and your iPhone, you put those two things together. To me, that looks like you know drugs and a hypodermic syringe. You know, a, a mobile device is literally a hypodermic syringe to deliver content to people. Um, and if you don't believe me, uh, take a look at this picture, which I have to believe uh, possibly is staged. Um, kids here enjoying a some kind of fairground ride, and then teenage be teenagers below uh, on their mobile much more interesting. I wonder whether this um, would actually ever happen. Transaction for some wall text. Um, uh, we'll see whether that happens. But, but thinking about content and, and transactions is, I think, very important, particularly for museums. When you see what kind of uh, things are coming down the pike for museums to, to take notice of. If you look at the... Uh, there's some significant challenges coming down which really will affect museums revenue streams and it may be that you know if you think about the newspaper industry which in many ways mirrors the museum uh, world in first of all giving away content and now putting trying to put up uh, paywalls there are some significant revenue impacts coming down for museums and you look at what's going on around payments through mobile devices a couple of weeks ago um, Facebook hired the president of PayPal to run their uh, messaging app. I think that is hugely uh, significant. Um, and actually, within the last week, you're starting to see reports of financial transactions hap happening on uh, the Facebook uh, platform. Hugely uh, impactful, and I think very important to museums when you think about digital strategy. So I had this thought experiment about the kind of Google model and um, using free, uh, putting up content for free, and then using some kind of indirect method to generate revenue, you know, Google are an advertising um, in the advertising business more than anything. But then, just thinking, you know, will we ever get to a subscription model, you know, based on micropayments uh, in the museum world? But really, what this tells me, you know, particularly thinking about content in the museum world, we really need to think about digital strategy like a uh, a content business plan more than anything. And I think framing it in that way is is significantly important. So what you're seeing is some, in some random thoughts, and I am building up to something much more substantial. And we saw the um, we talked about the three to five year technology, you know, digital strategy, not enough. Um, we showed you those technologies in the Horizon report. There are some much larger trends that are going on. Some broad trends over the last 20 years, which is really talking about the internet. We've gone from a very closed to a very open environment. You know, look at open source and the whole philosophy of openness, static to dynamic. Look, most things delivered uh, from data now, going from kind of reader to author, lots of people contributing uh, now, you know, tweeting, blogging, all those kinds of things. Product to service, um, you know, museums um, and, and other kind of media outlets going from this packaged product to delivering a service. Broadcasting a single message to communicating with our audiences. We've gone from this notion of stationary, you know, consuming content at a particular place uh, at a particular time to the kind of mobile uh, consumption of anytime, anywhere. Generic to personal now, um, 
and then passive to active, much more active participation in what's going on. American Idol is a classic example of a participatory event. And really what these, um, these tell me are uh, we have to shift institutional decision making because many institutions are still operating kind of in the red column when they should be operating in the green column. And, and digital strategy, I think, should be some kind of process that aligns an institution with the broad trends that are going on kind of outside of its walls. And I think that's where the key is, rather than thinking about individual technologies and platforms, thinking about the trends that are going on. Now I've captured, there have been a lot of changes recently in museums creating digital leadership positions and, and some of you who are participating and viewing uh, are probably captured in here. I know Nancy is in here, Scott's uh, in here. Uh, and again, I'll leave this for your viewing pleasure. Um, but creating digital leadership positions in museums, um, but I don't think this is a magic bullet. Um, the director seems to think you know, creating a chief digital officer or a CIO position automatically puts the museum in this kind of digital strategy, digital, you know, being able to accomplish digital stuff um, just by virtue of there being one person there. That is not going to happen. And my thoughts, um, and again, this may be coming from a, a background in, in personnel and administration, what's much more important, I think, is the director of digital human resources, someone who is ensuring that people coming into the institution mirror what is going on outside the institution. You know, it used to be that um, if, you, uh, if you had an IT problem, the IT so solution required IT experts uh, to do it. But now, you know, it's a commodity, it's a pay to play, it's not what you know, it's, it's about where and how you go about doing it. So one example would be, um, you know, it used to be if you wanted a website, you needed a programmer, or a designer, you know, an HTML coder, you know, now you just need uh, a credit card. You don't need to have those skills um, within your institution, but you need people who understand all this thing and, and what's going on. So clearly training is massively important in a digital strategy. There's a great quote here between conversation of, between a COO and a CFO, and I'd love to know the origin of this. Uh, the, CEO, the CFO says, what if we train staff and they leave? And the CEO says, what happens if we don't and they stay? If you know the, the origin to that, I'd love to know. Digital strategy, consequently, should be a professional development framework um, for your institution. Some kind of embedded mechanism for ensuring that people inside the institution uh, look like people outside the institution. And I blame job interviews because I think if you're in an institution, you know, job interviews, particularly in the museum world and particularly if you are involving HR, those job interviews are uh, geared to screen out risk takers, for example. And what? So you're in an institution, the director says, you know, we've got to start taking risks, but everybody in the institution has been filtered out by the HR department not to take risks. It's incredibly difficult. So I think there is an immense opportunity within a digital strategy to reinvent the job application, and I know um, Center for the Future of Museums are looking into how they might um, accomplish that in a, in a much more appropriate way, and really reinvent professional development, you know, how we're doing stuff uh, within museums. There's a great report um, from the McKinsey Global Institute on Internet Matters, Essays in Digital Transformation, and a couple of those things I'll share with you are literally about self-organizing societies and self that we live in and self-organizing institutions that really are driving things um, forward, and I think there's some great uh, points to be made from that. Tipping point is a, is a favorite of mine. Um, Mal Malcolm Gladwell teases apart how you create um, uh, how you create momentum and critical mass in something. And he comes up with these three uh, types of individuals, the connector, the maven, and the salesman, and, and explains how these things, um, how critical mass uh, gets going. And I think the similar, we need a similar thing in museums. Because traditionally, museums are about um, pigeonholing uh, objects and skills and requirements. So in many institutions, you know, you get the, um, you bring in a digital leader and there is the digital department. You know, it's the Department of Innovation and Creativity and it's, you know, the third door on the left down the corridor as opposed to something that needs to be much more embedded. And uh, there's a great quote actually in the tipping point, which is, um, that is the paradox of the epidemic. And he describes epidemic as critical mass around something that in order to create one contagious movement, you often have to create many small movements first. 
So I, I've kind of been thinking about this concept of how do you get kind of digital spread around your institution. So concepts like an innovation manager. What if you assign somebody in every department in your institution to be an innovation manager? Not necessarily looking at technology, but looking at how to improve processes, how to kind of smooth, you know, get things going. And also another kind of form of seeding that I've been thinking about, which is to put technical people within non-technical environments. And I mean, you know, specifically in non-technical non departments and see how those things um, play out. See if there's some kind of influence that that technology person can have on those non-technology persons. The other thing that I take issue with is year-end performance appraisals. I think everyone will... Uh, raise their hand and shout, yay, um, if, if we were to end performance appraisals. I think performance appraisals, you know, they're backward looking. They look back on the previous year and it has no, um, it has no bearing on really what's coming forward. I think performance appraisals should be ongoing, they should be forward looking, peer reviewed, maybe some kind of credentialing system which helps to embed uh, through kind of group effort and peer review embed required digital skills, processes and thinking just into basic everyday working practice. And I think that's much more important for a digital strategy than thinking about technology, specifically about technologies and platforms on which to um, deliver these things. So we're getting to the, the kind of money shot about what I've been thinking um, and you're going to be disappointed to know that um, I haven't solved everything and this really is a work in progress. So on the left you've got kind of blue, um, uh, the kind of traditional performance appraisal kind of metrics and measurements, accountability, communication, collaboration, teamwork, problem solving, those kinds of things. And what I think we really need in the digital strategy are, are uh, characteristics like this. So seeding, I talked about seeding and putting people in places um, to, to help uh, to help the institution look more like outside its walls. You know, people making connections between uh, strategies and technologies kind of embedded within a department. People looking to figure out how to accelerate uh, and create momentum in things. And people who are you know, innovating and are looking at how to think differently about things. I've got some other things like deciding, mentoring, persuading, motivating. And really what I'm trying to get at is, like I said, if, if um, here's a great example. So if you, uh, let's think about mobile and that kind of philosophy of mobile that it's not just about having a mobile phone, it's about this concept of consuming content anywhere um, and everywhere. So if you think about that, what's the best way to get a museum kind of aligned with mobile? And to me, it's about making the museum operate in a mobile fashion. So for example, you know, doing away with um, desktop computers, everyone gets a, a laptop and you create these spaces where people come together in a much more fluid way and you create this kind of mobile philosophy within the institution. Now I know many institutions may have a hard time doing that, but really that's the point I'm trying to make is making the inside institution look like the outside um, institution. And I've seen this many times. Uh, you're having a lecture, and so no one thought to add a video clause to the contract with the uh, the lecturer. No one thought to secure online rights, despite repeatedly and every time that lecture um, a lecture happens, uh, meeting with the people who organised it and reminding them that something um, uh, should something different uh, should happen. And nobody thought to solicit the social social media person. And then what about a more broader, comprehensive, rich media lecture series on your website? These conversations always happen after the event, a bit like the performance appraisal when you kind of look back and say, oh, well, we, you know, you didn't do this or you, you did do that, as opposed to some embedded process. And I think that's what a digital strategy should be, much more, much more about personnel, much more about embedding processes and um, philosophies within the uh, in the institution and shifting decision making so that next time all those things that should have happened last time um, do happen. You know, we've all been through the post-mortem on the exhibition but it seems that nothing ever uh, changes as a result of that. So I'm going to start wrapping up. I talked about people, process uh, and content. I think digital strategy is a successful digital strategy and again this is work in progress is less about the technology I think it's going to be more successful if you disconnect from the 
thinking about the technologies and focus on the trends that are going on. So it's about people, process, and content. Number one, hiring and developing people to mirror outside, not inside. You know, museums tend to hire in their own image and they tend to hire people who look like themselves as opposed to people who look like their audience. That would be much more beneficial, I think. You've got to figure out how to align and evolve the institution with cultural and societal trends. You know, you've got to be able to see these things coming and move, because museums move slowly. They can't uh, react to quickly changing technologies, particularly on a three-year cycle. It's got to be a much longer kind of curve that museums can align themselves with and that would be cultural and societal trends. And then I think we all have to start thinking differently about what content means to an institution. We need different applications and frameworks to manage the content that we have and think about content as an asset because at some point when um, these big mobile networks figure out micropayments, when people get comfortable with payments, Facebook is going to teach people that subscribing to content is the norm. And I think museums need to be prepared when that comes along because there are some significant issues coming down the pike for them. So content as asset rather than web content management. And then I always like, if you can capture something in a tweet, I think then you've, you've figured out how to describe it. So digital strategy, a self-sustaining framework to align staff and institutional decision-making with cultural and societal trends. Thank you so much for joining us today in our first ever virtual symposium and we're learning some valuable lessons on technology but overall this has felt like a wonderful symposium so far. I think we just got Nick back if he was getting ready to give us the bit.ly. So the bit.ly is obviously bit.ly it's slash nmc in capital letters 2014 dash honeyset. I hope you got the gist of my uh, emerging thoughts possibly crazy, but we'll see as I um, think through these things. But I would be interested to know what people think. Well, I want to be the first to thank Nick for an incredible, thought-provoking presentation today. That was really just awesome to see and uh, just take in everything. And I know that the chat on the right-hand side was just a buzz with excitement. You can meet us back here in a little bit less than 10 minutes.